Everybody, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We have reached episode 670. This is being recorded on March 30, 2022. I'm Sebastian Peak. I'm Jeremy Holstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Brett Van Spurnberg. You can support us on Patreon. Become a patron of the PC Per Arts. And this week we thank Biker Chris. Thank you for joining our PC Per community. And, thank you, Biker uh, Chris. Yes. We yeah. appreciate it. We appreciate all of our patrons. Food with Josh. Our most important food segment. Food with Josh. Yeah, it's our most important segment of the week. Yep. Laramie, Wyoming. So uh this was a uh this was an interesting one today. Uh it's the Bulgogi Hoagie. So apparently they're having kind of an international uh cuisine for downtown Laramie. And this is shaved beef to cook with onions, cabbage, and carrots in our house bulgogi sauce, served on a toasted hoagie and topped with sriracha mayo yeah this was this was definitely a keeper it was tasty it was bulgogi ish had a little bit of spice to it with the sriracha mayo everything was done and to perfection really i mean the the bun soaked up all those juices really nicely but still mm-hmm. didn't fall apart had to be very careful with it um however the bun wasn't so heavy that it just dominated the uh the the, the mouthfeel and the flavors uh, the, the shaved beef had had a good texture to it and was perfectly done. And the addition of the sesame seeds and the green onions just really helped to, to offset, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of sweetness of, of the carrots. It was, it was, it was bravo. Well done. Born in the barn. I mean, I, I just look at that detail of the sesame I was and the glistening seeds there. Pork. Yeah, yeah. The, the fries were actually perfectly done as well. Uh, they're probably the best ones I've had from them in a long time. Uh, sometimes they've been overcooked and a little undercooked or whatever. And this, these were just these were prime, prime, crispy ends. Prime. Mm. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, they're hand cut. They went back to hand cut. So I can't complain. This was a uh, this was a, a eight and a half nine out of ten for them. Very tasty. NVIDIA has officially announced the 3090 Ti. They're not just teasing us this time. And this time you can actually buy it, probably, possibly, if you have $2,000 or more. And it's a few more shaders or CUDA cores. It's two more SMs. So this works out to 10,752 versus 10,496, but higher clocks, higher boost clock of 1.86 gigahertz. And the, the memory is faster, too. 21 gigabit per second and it now has one terabyte of memory bandwidth that's better than apple i think oh, that's apple almost as good as radeon 7 that is it matches seven. hbm too yeah yes. yeah it's just what i was thinking yes so uh, how much faster is it well i think they are claiming up to nine percent we don't have one here says uh, 9% faster than the previous RTX 3090, but an MSRP of $500 more. Not that you can buy a 3090 for $1499. Yeah, 3090 costs the damn same price, essentially. Isn't it interesting that, uh, you know, the, the 3080 was, was kind of the, the, the go-to of this generation, mm-hmm. and then the 3080 T... Uh, not... 3080 12 was 400 bucks more. 3080 Ti, when it eventually came out, you can get them for 1700 bucks. And they just. This top end is insane how you get so much little for so much more money. You remember the Titans? I'm not sure it's supposed to work that way. Yeah. That's exactly. Well, you know, these Titans, they, they, they were branded that and are like. If you want a game with it, you can, but this is more for, you know, the, the data people, the visualization, the yeah. machine learning, the AI, and all of that. And and but these are Crypto all miners. Just, yeah, we do not speak yeah. of them around these parts. But a four hundred watt <laughs> TDP and uh, crypto mining—that doesn't sound any fun. You know, you're right about that. And I'm looking at this uh, tech power up has a review. Um, they, I think they had three reviews at launch one of them was for this interesting asus card it's the 
Strix LC, so liquid cooled, and it comes with an integrated 240 millimeter closed loop cooling solution. Wow. Where is the picture of that? Just a single power connector. That's the amazing. Well, that's, yes. the, power. that's the weird thing about it. Well, but yeah, also, no, it uses the new Intel, uh, mm -hmm. the PCI Gen 3, not, I can't remember what the hell they even call it, but yeah, um, that, that, that plug can handle up to 600 Watts and, uh, they have a variable power rate. I can't remember what exactly the technology is. There's too many things going on, but yeah, it's the, uh, first, uh, first one to have this. Look at that and monster. You'll Look at all those phases. This this body was measured pulling 516 watt before they overclocked it. So what can one of these liquid-cooled 3090 Ti's do for you? Now, naturally, you would be gaming at 1080p. Sure. Uh, if yep. you spent $2,000 on a graphics card. So Assassin's Creed Valhalla 1080p, 114 FPS. Now, the 6900 XT is still the king of 1080p gaming at high frame rates. Oh, yeah. That's still faster and a lot cheaper. So don't buy the 3090 Ti if you are just planning on playing at 1080p. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, anyway. I, I can't anything. believe how how low the 2080 Ti is on that, actually. I would think that was the, the bottom uh, of the barrel on that top. Well, that this top is a pretty high-end stack of GPUs they tested, considering that the low end is a 3070 slash 2080 ti yeah which are very close that's to each what other i'm sort of performance yeah that's what i'm sort part. of like uh oh my oh yeah. wow yeah and then but 4k of course the, 4K. the 3090 ti is faster than everything else and it holds true uh the the nasty one is if you just keep scrolling keep scrolling you'll see the ray tracing like scroll way oh, down. like go to a different page go to page 40 or so okay Page uh, let's see. Page thirty-four. Okay. okay, yeah, it's better. It has and it has more RT and um, what are the other ones called? It has more ray tracing stuff enabled than but, the thirty-nine. Ooh, that that, yeah, that get, cyberpunk kind of uh, yeah. It's a pretty big jump. It goes from 48 FPS at 1440 with ray tracing. Now, obviously not DLSS, or is it with DLSS? Let's see. Let's keep going. Uh, I don't believe there was DLSS in that. They did do it with some of them. Good Lord, these pages are long. Uh, just oh, yeah. No, they on don't yeah, stop. Forever. Man, I'm, I'm pretty sure the... that they have trained hundreds of monkeys to do their benchmarking at this point because it just is an impressive amount. Okay. No, it's it's another one that uh, you know if you're if you're doing AI work, and you need yeah. the faster memory, um, because it's it's double the density of the 3090, so per chip, mm -hmm. uh, actually apparently it, it it's easier to cool because they don't need to cool all the chips on the on the back. Yeah, you just put it all on the front. Yeah, around the GPU. Yeah, so and uh, you know again, be good. There was some yep. criticism with there only being seemingly a limited amount or no more additional cooling. Perhaps this is the reason. You know, they don't have the they don't have the chips soldered into the yep. back. So yep. not really not really a fair criticism. Oh, you mean criticism yet. of the founders edition design? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, I mean, AIBs can do whatever they want. Specific founders edition design. Yes. 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 Which yes. apparently is better this time. It's a better engineered board, perhaps. But I'm still impressed that I the, the that a couple hours after release I still saw some available online for near MSRP. It was is bizarre. that still the case? Uh, I doubt it. Oh, I haven't checked, but Did I doubt it. Did you check the shuffle today? <laughs> there was one yesterday, and it was a uh, some Xbox Series X bundle for seven so hundred. Not dead. The shuffle lives. It's not entirely dead. Wow, bizarre. Okay, I I, I just checked Micro Center. Oh. Whoa. Okay, let's check live. Newegg.com. Live. In stock. Two of them Don't are in stock. Any. Wow, for $20.99. The, yeah, that really sweet uh, liquid-cooled one. Wait, no, that's just a Strix. It's, wait, it just, uh, no, that's a Strix. I thought the Strix was liquid-cooled. Apparently, there's a non-liquid-cooled and a liquid-cooled. Okay. All the other ones are out of stock, so just a Zotac Gaming for $20.99 and a Gigabyte for twenty one forty nine, and the amp extreme will probably have a better clock on it. Not guaranteed, but probably. 
Did yeah, you happen to see the, new see the um, see the it's size of the MSI Supreme one, Sebastian? It's is it huge. Even bigger than the last Supreme? It is. It's a it's a triple slot and a half width. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Is there a picture of it on that? Yeah, I, I was hoping that you would yeah, click on that one. Side. Yeah, see if you can't. Yeah, there you go. See if you can get a side shot of that. There you go. Look at that. Three. <laughs> three. <laughs> that is a big graphic. Three and card. a half slots. Oh, that's chunky. Talk about thick. Mm. Yeah, you got to have quite a case for that one. You're not going to get that in your average ITX box. Um, local Micro Center has got a, a whole bunch of these in stock, all EVGA, and they have three. My local Micro Center has three. 3090 TIs. Mm. Uh, limit one. Sorry. Limit one at a time. Yeah. Because, but I wanted to SLI them. <laughs> I think <Shut> uh, <laughs> our friend uh, Paul tried to do that and uh, oh, it yeah? didn't work. I'm not surprised. Yeah. It was a failure. The power supply probably said, What the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> All right. Speaking of graphics, yeah. Intel are. Oh. Is here the Arc A series discrete graphics are here on mobile, but they they are discrete, so they're starting off on the mobile front. Whether or not you can actually buy one was a somewhat contentious point with certain people on the social media today. But uh, it's just you know it's a launch. Whether it's a paper launch or a physical launch, it's it's a launch in the tech industry, and we have Arc Three, Arc Five, Arc Seven. And I was thinking, oh, okay, Arc 3 is the only one that's going to be available at first. That's probably pretty low end. But it, have no fear. Even the entry-level Arc 3 is still XE HPG. It's not... And it's the, enhanced gaming. Yeah, this is not... It's not the, just gaming. It's enhanced. Right. They're not calling it entry-level. They're calling it... Which is... This is this is marketing, but, you know, it goes from enhanced to advanced to high-performance. And GDDR6 memory, and... They're kind of cutting this more for um, content creation rather than truly big gaming at this point, <clears throat> and especially the, the, the Arc 3, because I don't think it offers a whole lot more than, uh, you know, integrated uh, uh, AMD, you know, Vega, or their latest mobile RDNA 2 Um but uh, the feature set is impressive. I mean, um, ray tracing, uh, matrix calculations, uh, their units. I forget what they they called their their the the way they have it set up. I know Tom uh, Tap uh, had a thing with PC World where he talked to them for quite a while about you know all all the stuff that goes into it and. In terms of features, it's it it really is competitive with what uh, the competition has uh, in terms of of everything it packs in there, and in fact, it takes it up a notch with the ability to encode. Um, was it AV one? Yeah, A AV one, mm -hmm. uh, which it would be you know they're the first announced people to uh, be able to do that. And I mean, if you're, I mean, we, we've got so many people who are streamers. Um, it's just kind of silly. And them getting this for their streaming box will allow them to, you know, stream at, at, at a much uh, higher, maybe let me walk this back. They can have better quality at the same bit rate, or they can have the same quality at a much <clears throat> lower bit rate. So, you know, for me, uh, you know, I usually stream at 1080p. And at this point, I could probably jump that up to 1440 if I had one of these cards in and, and we were able to do that with the same amount of bandwidth. And that's, you know, that's that's a significant improvement. And, uh, you know, they go through uh, a bunch of the video options and, and um, examples. And, you know, ground clutter is much more clear. Um, as compared to, you know, older H.264 uh, dot two help me out, two sixty four. I can't remember H. all the numbers. Two sixty four, not two sixty five. Yeah, sixty four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you, you get uh, fewer compression um effects. Artifacts, artifacts. Artifacts. God, I can't talk tonight. And I haven't even had anything to drink other than that's water. The, that's the problem. 
you should you should you, you should. need a break josh go get yeah some. but I, I i had some last night and i snored really badly and i kept the wife up like all mm-hmm. night and it was terrible so you know I, I need to i need to cut back and plus you know i'm a little heavy and it's still a little chilly on the dog coast, and, isn't it Let's talk some hard yeah. numbers here for a second, because they're a slide Let's. from the presentation showed that the A370M has eight of the XE cores, eight ray tracing units, and four gigs of GDDR6 memory. Doesn't give clocks necessarily here. Uh, and then A350M is six of the XE cores and six ray tracing units. Same amount of memory. And then if you look at this next slide, a leap above integrated graphics. And are they comparing it to AMD? No, they're comparing it to the Iris X. So it shows that they're targeting 60 FPS with the Arc 3 at whatever. These are medium settings. Uh, it's I, I remember than old integrated, but I remember gaming being one of the bragging rights of their new far faster IGP in the latest chip. I believe that there was uh, somebody we knew who was actually demonstrating that at one point. Might oh, absolutely, a, yeah. Might have, I mean, you might have been a shrout. <laughs> 60 frames per second if you lower the settings. It, there's there's no limit to what you can do if you lower the settings far <laughs> enough. What? These are gamed? I'm I'm shamed. No. Well, I mean the settings like Ryan when he did the the Tiger Lake laptop thing on Twitter it was yes, that's, like that's exactly what I was thinking. You're hitting a frames per second target and you probably have to do like 1080 low to make that happen, but hey, it's a laptop with integrated graphics. So are, and, practically so are these. When I, I'm working on a Ryzen 7 5700G thing. I actually bought one myself at Best Buy, which is a terrible oh. company and never shopped there. And uh, they, it, so far... Bye-bye advertising. They They tried their, their best to screw me over today, and I'm not happy with them about it. Not doing Let's it. Uh, look at the A-Series mobile graphics lineup, shall we? We talked about the core counts of the 3, the ARC 3. The ARC 5 doubles it. You go from eight XE cores to 16. You double the memory. And then the ARC 7, let's double it again. Wait, no. Actually, you double it again if you go all the way up to the top. The A770M has 32 of those XE cores and 16 gigabytes of memory. Available early summer. No pricing mentioned. Consult your local laptop manufacturer. Or, or Best Buy. Perhaps you could pick it up there. XC super sampling is coming. The exciting new AI upscaling technology that is not DLSS. It's Intel's version of it. And look at all these XCS X XS. Look at all these XS games coming in early summer. You've got um, Super People. Super People. You have <laughs> Dolman. If that was Dolman, I would buy it because that would be a funny game. Wait, it's. I, I call people I don't like chorbs. Is is that probably yeah? Uh, is that what that? Shut the hell up, you chorb. Or or is it what chorus? The and they're using the oh, old it's chorus. You, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Well, I still yeah. like chorbs. Yeah. Okay, Chivalry Two, you the, Hitman Three, you heard of the band Churches? Shadow Tomb Raider, Grid Legends. And there's some games. Uh, XMX accelerate your workflows. And there's XMX. the Advanced Media Engine. Hmm. XMX. What is that? Yeah, what Looks, is that? It, well, I'm seeing some icons here that suggest this might be um, useful for like Adobe Premiere video editing, for example. This is what Josh was talking about. There's the industry first full AV1 support. Thanks, Google. And AV1 hardware acceleration is 50% fat. Or sorry, can I read? 50 times faster than software encoding. Amazing. That's the power. Fixed of, function uh, still still has a place in this world. A lot of these headlines are a little misleading. If you read things like mm-hmm. Intel's long-awaited ARC GPUs begin shipping today. Well, they're you, they're yeah shipping to manufacturers oh, who you know the first one's going to be released supposedly and for sale on April sixth. Okay, it's, ours writer Andrew C says this in the title and then under the first image the caption is Intel's Arc GPUs will begin shipping in laptops soon. But wait, the headline said shipping today. Don't ask uh, Kyle if they're shipping today or not. Yeah. Twitter. You might get angry at each other. All right. Uh, so you can't buy them yet, but you will be soon. And they're not that fast, but they're faster than integrated Intel graphics. You know, Intel really, really missed an opportunity here. I mean, 
as we'll see later on, uh, GPU shortages are probably going to be a thing of the past in the next two months. And yeah. they aren't able to ship any desktop cards probably until later this summer. And so it's it's like they, they kind of missed the boat uh, in timing, which happens when you're getting into a new uh, marketplace in terms, you know, discrete GPU graphics. Um, and by the time they do probably get up to speed, um, the 4000, the NVIDIA 4000 series and the next generation AMD parts are, are going to be announced and probably shipping at the uh, beginning of fall. So they, they kind of, they kind of missed their window, but I guess that they're, they're only producing, they're expecting to produce 4 million cards the first year. And when you compare that to the competition, that's, that's just, that's not very many. I am with you hundred percent, Josh, if they had come out with this in the midst of the GPU shortage and been priced competitively and had at least a decent supply, I don't care if it's only targeting 6,500 XT performance levels. Have, put another buy four card on the market. Who cares that at that point when you couldn't buy a GPU <clears throat> at all, sell a GPU for $200. That's what people wanted. 199 hit that Polaris price point again. But who knows? But, you know, designing a chip, especially when you're new to it, is hard. And then we have yet to really talk about the other issue, <clears throat> and that is uh, what's the quality mm-hmm. of their software and drivers. Right. They've improved yeah. dramatically with their integrated stuff, and you, you kind of expect them to be on that same kind of level, but it's still – it's still a new architecture that is aimed at 15 watt mobile up to potentially 250 watt on desktop. I think there are still some games that don't play on iGPU, so their software still the driver stack still needs help. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone's does uh, as sure. far as the iGPU oh, yeah. goes. As far as Fair. well, it's it's a simple detection problem for the most part. But my thing is that, and I. The, the spoiler is, I think it's more software than it is hardware. But yeah, it's it was announced. Uh, it's supposed to be available as of, you know, uh, is there one behind me now? But did anyone actually have one to play with at all that you saw? Because I didn't. I didn't see anyone that actually had one outside of the Intel presentation. Yeah, I don't, and I haven't seen them. didn't see them. Up. No. Because and I'm talking like the 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 usual suspects on YouTube that are seated this and said, "You get to play with this. Yeah. You have to tell us the most amazing thing ever." But well, they're, they're, they're not going to start seeding these out until they get the five and the seven because I think Fair. they're going to look at the performance of the three and they're going to compare it to a low end standalone like a thirty fifty or. Uh, what is what is the AMD mobile? Is They're not going to compare it to the only other AMD chip that Intel ever made. <laughs> what the i7 40? Hey, it that looked pretty on, good against that. That lived on in their chipsets for a while. The 810 and 815. Yes, it did. I'm not, oh yeah, yeah. That technology was bad. unchanged for years. It, it's not going to. It's not going to perform well against even the lowest and discrete mobile graphics. But the five and the seven probably will be a lot better in terms of that. But, you know, we, we just don't know so much about this. I mean, we, we know some, some basics and, and, you know, we, we've seen some diagrams, um, but no third party testing on power draw. Mm. Uh, we know, you know, kind of what um, process technology that they're, they're doing this on. Apparently it's, it's their Intel's uh, 10 nanometer, but now they're calling it, Obviously, something different. Intel seven, um, seven, seven, yeah, Intel now. seven. Yeah, but it's uh, we just we just until people get hands on and can you know do some diagnostics and poke and probe and and see actual draw. Uh, can we get an idea? And again, they're they're supposedly only making four million of these, and that doesn't bode entirely well for this generation. Uh, especially in terms of manufacturing and that it's as late as it is. I think that they were expecting uh, some of the mobile stuff in Q4 last year and desktop in Q1 of this year. And obviously that's, that's two quarters at least uh, that they're delayed. Let's pause here for a word from our first podcast sponsor this week. 
Hey, have you heard of Collide yet? Collide sends employees important, timely, and relevant security recommendations for their Linux, Mac, or Windows devices right inside Slack. And if you're like many organizations, you know you can reach your employees on Slack. Collide is perfect for organizations that care deeply about compliance and security, but don't want to get there by locking down devices to the point where they become unusable. Instead of frustrating your employees, Collide educates them about security and device management while directing them to fix important issues. Visit collide.com slash PC per to check this out and sign up today. That's K O L I D E dot com slash PC per. Use your email and get a free Collide gift bundle after trial activation. At Collide, we know that end users are IT admins most significant untapped resource and their key to solving the most challenging to fix security issues, including instructing developers to set passphrases on unencrypted SSH keys, finding plain text two factor backup codes, and teaching end users how to store them securely, and convincing employees to uninstall those e Evil browser extensions that may even sell their browser history. These are just some of the many use cases not solved by locking down devices. You can try Collide with all of its features on an unlimited number of devices for free for 14 days with no credit card required. Try it out at collide.com slash PC per. That's K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash PC per. It is finally getting to the point where I can actually maybe talk about a GPU price again without, you know, wanting to go and hide in the bathroom for about three or four days. So wait, you're saying that it could be the return of the hardware leaderboard? I, it's it's if it dips below fifty percent above MSRP, I could actually think about doing it. Isn't that sad? This is what we're talking about now. Like not anything below MSRP. Yeah, that's the bloody good news. Is it's only about fifty percent more than it should cost you. And presumably, a few other vendors will drop in price by twenty five percent in the near future. The, I mean. Jeremy, this is... Well, that's specifically the U.S. That's the tariff thing that you guys did. Okay, that's right. Right, so Asus was yeah. the first to say it. There's a couple of other vendors over there because they changed the wording on the tariffs. So it's not that all the tariffs are being dropped. It's that uh, this wonderfully specific uh, terminology that they used, which is a, a printed circuit board or sorry, printed circuit assemblies for rendering images onto computer screens. So they're cutting the, hmm. the 25% tariff from that and that only. So your CPU is going to still have it. Uh, up here in Canada, we never had to deal with that. So we've never seen the reason for the price jump other than, well, shit, the Americans did it, so we're going to do it too. Uh, but now things are starting to sort of come down a little bit. Uh, the other thing is, uh, Brett, who does occasionally go near that tainted, tainted world, uh, checked on nice hash. And yeah, if you're running anything less than one of the sweethearts of the mining cards, at best, you're making two or three bucks a day mm. on the, on the major, major coins, which when you consider how much you've spent on the card, how much you're spending on electricity is not actually that amazing. Uh, if you're running a sweetheart, you can double it up to like six bucks, but your power bill is also more going up by more than 70 or 80%. So there's, there's this, the drop in that, the fact that a lot of places are just, you know, we're, we're actually now getting stuck with uh, stock because they don't want to pay a hundred percent premium on top of stuff for some reason. Uh, it's kind of weird. And you, you've had a couple of new cards like Intel. I don't know. Maybe they're going to have an effect on the pricing as well. It's too early to say, but now that you've sort of seen this little dip, now the lemmings are running off the cliff because as I've seen on a couple of comments on eBay, people are now starting to unload that 60 power to 60 cards. They've gotten their back for actually less than they paid for. So it's, it's actually getting the point where GPUs are not, just nauseating to talk about. It's still upsetting. Like and we're still talking like 25 to 50% over MSRP, which still sucks, especially what the MSRPs are, but it's, it's a better glimmer than a lot of people have been saying. Cause a lot of people have been, Oh yeah. Back in 2021, they're like, Oh, don't worry. It can't last. The, the prices will be going down. And all four of us here are like, yeah, yeah, sure. Buddy. That's, I'll, I'll buy that. I'll, t I'll go to the store on my flying pig and buy that at MSRP. But this one actually looks like it might be a trend that's going to last for a little bit. 
a buddy will hope so. And we've even got a couple of examples. Yeah, well, this is still overpriced, but it's only... Oh, God, imagine yeah. a few months ago finding a 6800 XT in stock for $1,000. And not just a few. Yeah. No, that's what I paid originally in Canadian, but that was also what I expected to pay. Yes, we admit that that's Micro Center, but they're generally the, you know, the for the shock value of showing the lowest price possible, they'll be the leader in that, you know, the vanguard of lower prices to come for the rest of us. Yeah, well, as I was showing, the Merc, which is still in stock, yeah. is a mere 200 or sorry, mere $300 more. So it's only a third more than you should be paying for it. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's not great news, but it's good news. Are we done talking about uh, graphics card prices? Should we move on to something tangentially related? Because it, is, it involves NVIDIA. And you know how they have that creepy technology where you can take 2D pictures and, and yep. then it can create they nerfed 3D? It. Super creepy. But they nerfed it in a good way, Okay, which is weird. Well, because usually when something gets nerfed, you're you're pissed off because your favorite overpowered character class got reduced in power. Well, in this case, uh, the Neural Irradiance Field Tech uh, by NVIDIA used to take minutes, maybe even hours, to stitch together uh, a series of stills into a 3D render. Now... Instant nerf does it, well, pretty much bloody instantly if you're running Ampere or Hopper. Uh, but even like a, a regular RTX card is able to do this if you want to play around with a GitHub source code and set it up. But like, it's kind of freaking neat that as long as you've got uh, a fair number of still pictures of something with little movement in it, because... It, it's not that brilliant. So if there's movement, you'll end up with blurry parts. You end up with long cat or dog with two legs and a head attached to its tail. But if you've got like a really nice picture of something and you want to render it in 3D, like the Lego example is a great thing, or you want to take a picture of something and be able to look around it in case you break it one day, uh, this is actually the way it does it. They're, they're talking like 20 or 30 photos and this would be a picture of Nerf. This is literally a bunch of stills that someone took walking around her. And now it's a 3D render. It's kind of nifty. This will be. Do you remember when they needed a quarter million dollars worth of camera to do that and made the Matrix when they did that sort of thing? Yep. I was going to say, this is uh, destined to be used for NFL replays. For all time. That's exactly what I was thinking people would use it for, yes. Because they do something similar to this, but it's just like you can tell that they stitched a few photos together, but this is going to no. change instant replay on TV forever. And, and the wacky part about it is that this is a neural net, but they're training it in stupidly short amounts of time. Thanks. With a very still set of photos that are all the same subject. So yeah, there are cheats, but still, it's bloody impressive. When... When I was doing this years ago, we used to use a motorized turntable and a stationary camera, and we would spin yep. the objects. And you would do that all the way up to the size of a car, for instance. You know, we had giant turntables for that sort of thing. Um, I can imagine that the three-dimensional photography that could be possible out of this process, um, especially with, obviously, training a neural net, would be fantastic. I look forward to the cool 3d models and the, the interesting thing about this is once you can 3d model these smaller objects you can actually slice them and then recreate them in a 3d printer i wouldn't i'm not saying a car but there are many objects that you can you can model like this and then turn around and recreate so this is a boon towards things that are difficult to to find like you know, car parts that are out of uh long out of production and stuff like that that you can actually model like this and then 3d print I think that would be an interesting chain yeah. of events. Uh, by the way, we have to pay our respects to the creators of however you want to pronounce the GIF Polaroid? and the TRS-80. No. Sometimes pronounced the Trash-80. Is it GIF? Yes, is it, it is. GIF? It, there is only one proper pronunciation. Well, allegedly. I, I think and it allegedly. will be the hill that I die on because even the creator is wrong. Yes, I agree. See, I'm 100. Yeah, I agree right. with it, I agree it, with the current. I would agree here. with the wrongness. You're right. <laughs> no, let's see. It it he, he always insisted Stephen E. Wilhite, that is, 
I don't care. Insisted it was pronounced as GIF. Then why did you spell it with a G, Stephen? Answer me. Yes. Oh, wait, you can't. Yes. Because he liked peanut butter? Apologies to his family. No. That was- Engineers don't get to name things anymore. He, oh, he created it while at CompuServe. Who's the other naming one? things is one of the is one of the most difficult issues in computerdom. It's yeah. uh, off by one errors. Um, yeah. The naming things um, those are yeah typical computerdom problems. Very very difficult. And the other thing is that not every single GIF incorporates a giraffe. <laughs> so if it was a and giraffe all- interface format, I could understand it. But it's a graphics. <laughs> interchange and yes and not all gifts move i know that most people don't remember that some of them are 256 color stills they're very efficient the very compressed image files so in the early right. days of the internet they saw widespread use for still oh come on do you not remember that picture of the plane with the moving clouds behind it it yes. made it look like the plane was moving and First in homage in homage to where I actually learned to program first. Oh my! You had to. You had to actually run a. Uh, oh gosh! The uh, oh god! No, Josh, don't do GIF, that to me. Uh, the the, the to to be able to it was a specific GIF viewer because like DOS four point oh. six point yeah. whatever they they didn't have that natively. And so when your friend brought over his 1.5, 1.44 meg floppy of, of girly pictures, you, you, you would be able to see him. Um, and the TRS-80, the guy who invented the TRS-80 also passed away. And yes. he was, he actually, his name was Roach. He actually uh, became a, the, I think the president of the Tandy Corporation. Yes. Uh, John all Roach. All the way to 1999, passed away at the age of 83. Um, yeah, uh, a, a weirdly enough, Radio Shack brought computing to home, the hometown Tandy. space where it was, it was in so many places in schools and communities and homes everywhere. That was some people's first exposure to computers right down to the Coco, the color computer. Oh, the Coco 100. Those are such brilliant ads back in the day. And they were, they were, and I actually learned how to first program on a TRS-80 in, a, in school. Yeah. Well, at least you weren't a commie. No, but I did write my first virus. Did I say that out loud? I meant my first hacker thing on a TRS-80 as well. It was a keyboard funnel thing. Well, like a uh, key logger? Uh, it would mess up people's uh, keystrokes when... Oh, yeah. Yeah, because there used to be this this memory location that the keyboard funnel was sent through, and the the keystrokes were analyzed one one hit at a time, and you could play with it because it was in memory uh, memory location that you could write mm-hmm. to. You yes. could one off it or randomize. It. Well, you couldn't really randomize it, but you could choose it. Well, you could do anything. You, yes, so you yeah. could run a program that was that you could terminate and and put in memory that would mess with the keyboard funnel and it would kind of destroy the computer until it was rebooted. But you just had to turn it on, on and off again. So. Everything I type comes in as kill dash nine. I don't understand. It's like it's just is random. It just types crap. Yeah. They were not happy with me at school. I wasn't allowed in the computer computer lab for like I don't know half a semester once. Let's pause here again for a word from another podcast sponsor this week. Hey, work smarter, not harder. Get Text Expander. Text Expander helps you work faster and smarter so you can focus your time on your most important work. With just a few keystrokes, Text Expander keeps you consistent, accurate, and working efficiently. Speed through emails. Expand forms with fill in the blank fields using a quick abbreviation. Time saving power. Use Text Expander's powerful shortcuts and abbreviations to streamline and speed up everything you type. Get your message right every time. Expand content that corrects your spelling and keeps your language consistent with just a few keystrokes. Hey, here's how it works. Drop your commonly used content into a text expander snippet and give it an abbreviation. Share that snippet with your entire team. Just type a few characters to trigger your snippet and the content expands anywhere you type. It's that easy. Whether you're a business or a busy person, Text Expander can help you become more efficient and improve your communications. Text Expander is available on Mac, Windows, Chrome, iPhone, and iPad. Show listeners get 20% off their first year. So visit textexpander.com slash podcast to learn more about Text Expander. Let's go Indeed. through the gaming quick hits, shall we? Briefly. 
And the first on the list is a small update on Flintlock, the Siege of Dawn. Tell me, Jeremy. Yeah, Dawn is a city. Uh, the, the humans got kicked out of Dawn because the gods wanted to open a gateway to the the world of the dead so they could flood the world with, you know, undead, like gods do. Uh, they've been really, really cagey on any sort of gameplay. The bits I'm seeing looks a bit like Skyrim with uh, flintlock firearms and a bit like Souls-like because you got big bosses. But what it really, really reminds me of is uh, an author named Glenn Cook who wrote The Instrumentalities of the Night, which was a similar sort of world where humans are just sort of invo- inventing gunpowder, gun but they're also plagued by a whole bunch of ancient gods that just don't like humans not worshiping them and figured out that, you know, if I load my cannon with, you know, a whole bunch of silver and gold and random stuff, I can kill gods with this thing. And that sort of seems to be what the the story behind this is, is you got to retake the city, kill a bunch of gods and, you know, shut that damn door on the undead. It's, it's just unseemly. <laughs> Supposedly out later this year. We'll see. All right. All right we're going to, uh, we're going to skip B. Okay. All right. Let's skip B. Let's move to C. Uh, listeners, you don't need to know what B was. It's fine. No, you don't need to know it's, that. Uh, it's just our secret here. Oh, uh, that's just dirty. Witcher news. What's new? That's here? a links apparently. Witcher 4. What's your. For you oh, non Canadians <laughs> that don't see the ear tufts immediately, that's a links. Jeremy writes Watcher Witcher 4. Predictions is the title of this article. You, you can't stop the Jeremy. You can't. You cannot stop it. It's an unstoppable force. You can only slow it down. Now, it says a new saga begins. It's being assumed that this is Witcher 4, not a spinoff. Not a well, well, is it though? Well, but is it? Right. It says a new saga begins. Isn't that what uh, George Everyone Lucas said prequels. about the, Isn't that what George Lucas said about the prequel trilogy? Or, and no, how that was that the saga count? begins. Mm. With like a picture of like it was Anakin, but his shadow was Darth Vader. So it's it's actually going to be uh, just diplomacy then. Okay, yeah. You're, you're going to be running diplomacy, diplomatic missions between the various uh, factions, and totally not kicking off a six story or a six movie war. Well, the important thing is that this is part of a new multi year strategic partnership with Epic Games. That's and Unreal Engine. So I they're moving know. over to Unreal Engine, which is interesting. Well, yeah, it'll look good. It's a modern well, game engine. I know that people have modded Witcher, but it's been a pain with Unreal. Uh, well, I away you go, away you go, boy. Do whatever the hell you feel like. If you want to put Thomas the Tank Engine in instead of Griffin's. There you are. Next, the Stanley Parables Expanded Ultra Deluxe Edition finally arrives in April. Uh, April is I, I uh, think probably tomorrow as you're listening to this. It's soon. However, this the actual release date is modeled after the number of the employee in which you sort of inhabit. So mm-hmm. it'll be late in April. Oh, I it'll see. Be, April 27 uh, is what it yeah. says here. Yeah. If you hit play on this, I think it says the first few seconds of this, if there's no ads does say it all. This game is brilliant. That would spoil it. You'll just have to trust me. Look at all those older grand prizes from like 2013, 2014. Well, it's not a new game. No, it's not. You can tell. But it'll be released on 427. Okay. I thought you were going to say 420. Nope, 427. Um, I would encourage people who like a little meta in their game and then would like a lot of extra meta to go play the original version. How just meta? So is that, this like metaverse? Um, no. It's, uh, it's no. The opposite no. of? Um, and the, the thing is, it that the, the way that they're talking about it, if you haven't, haven't played Stanley Parable and you sort of decide that you're going to do it, uh, the ultra uh, super deluxe modern edition that they're coming out with, they actually has more dialogue and stuff in it than the original did altogether. So you can uh, 
dip your toes in and then see what happens. It's basically a game about a game about a game. And then there's points awarded in a weird way and it, it ends or it never ends. It's one of the two. Let's move on to our uh, security section. Confidential GPU computing, NVIDIA's cloud gets an Azure lining. Is it Azure? Is it Azure? What is this? I always went Your with Azure. eyes were Azure as the, okay. the darkest night. So, wait, no, her eyes were. It's Canadian. I like the hero. You probably don't know them. I like the hero picture in this one a lot, by the way. So, thank you for that. The glowing phosphor. You're very welcome. Well, oh, there's would that. You like to and play it was. A game? Would you? Yeah, it's very war games. I mean, come on, man. Come on. I don't it know. Literally come on, is man. War games. Come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. I didn't see it. Come on, man. All right, we interrupt your regularly scheduled vulnerability news for some good security. All right. <laughs> really? Yeah. Hey, so. go go uh, go boot best cams from uh, the YouTube chat. Oh yeah. All right. I mean, it's, it's distracting. Sorry. Uh, I don't really understand how to use this. So, you know how AMD introduced uh, SEV in the original Epic processors so that uh, any traffic over the PCI bus was pretty much encrypted and signed so you couldn't really hijack anything in between there? Well, Microsoft and NVIDIA have invented this for the first time ever. Although I'm, I kid mostly because, no, it is brilliant to have on Azure that uh, there's now going to be a key exchange between the NVIDIA driver uh, on that virtual machine and the actual physical A100 GPU. So it's a little more internal than the Epic one, but it stops some, you know, it stops Skynet from suddenly realizing, oh, hey, there's a whole crap load of processing power over high need that I broke in through the driver and I'm going to start demanding cycles from it. And it's going to say, yeah, mm, computer says no. So it, it is nice. It, it's a good thing that, uh, you know, Azure is sort of realizing that, yeah, a lot of the reason they haven't been able to pick up some customers is because they've been a little lackadaisical on security. They, they definitely have security. And by cloud standards, it's decent. But seriously, guys, it, someone compromises part of that VM on that giant stack you've got and then gets a hold of the whole thing all at once, you got problems. So by implementing this in, it's it's really nice. I It, it is TPM-ish and they don't always go wonderfully. Sometimes they cause horrific problems, but I mean, is not the bricked and dead VM better than the, oh crap, so I was... Patient zero in the uh, whole loft craft thing to uh, bring up an old one. Yeah, you can reimage the next VM. You know. Yeah, but when it starts fighting you, then you got to find the plug. All right, All right next, moving on quickly. Yeah, next story: irony. Now we heard about this. We've been trying not to mention the name of this hacking group, but it may be over for them. Yeah. So, yeah, well, a lot of them uh, arrested. Seven. Of these hackers, suspect, well, suspected hackers, arrested in the UK. Due suspected. To oper- I mean, you know, allegedly they were arrested. We don't know that for sure. I didn't see it happen. Uh, due to poor operational security. So what are the details here? What, what, what like did the another... bastard operator from hell call the <laughs> pimply-faced... Uh, <laughs> newbie. Uh, uh, no, oh, my God. Pimply-faced you. Gotcha. Yeah. That that was a great series, Bastard Operator from Hell. Um, He's still going. Yeah, so based- Simon is still <laughs> writing them. He's up to about episode six this year. So oh, there, there was it, a war between it, them uh, in the last one. Uh, PFY decided to sort of grow some chest hair and try and take over. Didn't go well. Well, anyway. On the lapses story, it looks like these are 16 to 20 year old kids living with their moms in the UK and maybe, maybe South America. Uh, and the, another hacking team looks like they doxed them, turned in some of their names, real names, addresses, pictures of their dads. And not only that, they were in the, I'll dox you. 
they were in the middle of exfilling some Microsoft data when they bragged about it on uh, on Twitter or someplace, and uh, they were actually not done. So they actually got their knees cut off during <laughs> during the, the moment of uh, their own internal triumph, which is I, I'm not I'm not advocating for it. Clearly, I'm just saying that you know for them this was a big deal. They bragged about it while they're in the middle of doing it and got cut. Um, but yeah, it looks like a bunch of them got pulled in. Uh, this may or may not be a force to be reckoned with still. Uh, clearly, the way that they go about whatever it is they're doing is in the 16 to 20-year-old mindset. Okay. If you can say uh, that. Well, obviously. Yes. And life goes on and for all the companies that were supposedly in hot water over this. Mm, undone by their own youthful enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. And poor yeah. operational security. <laughs> Finally, hoisted by their own petard, indeed. Yes, yes it's perfect. <laughs> uh, finally, tonight, something about IPv6. Oh, friggin' security. hell. So, the idea with an IP address is it's generally, you know, randomly generated. It's not, say, specifically tied to the physical hardware in your system. And IPv6 was supposed to be that, but, well, even more so. Guess what? The slackers, uh, the ones that use stateless auto address configuration, uh, when you're first connecting to a system, when you're first connecting to the internet, it uh, it allows a device to generate its own host portion, and it appends that to the prefix uh, that the router provides. Except a bunch of freaking idiots decided that, well, it's kind of hard to figure out, you know, how to generate your own host portion of a random IPv6 address. So why don't we just use the MAC address? That That's fine, right? No one's going to be bothered. And so you've got a secured system on your network and you've got another phone on your network and you've also got a TV. And so the TV broadcasts its MAC address at the very beginning of your connection when you first took up to your ISP. And yet all of the other devices are still going through the same gateway. And they're, of course, randomly generating all of their prefixes like they should be. Except for that damn TV, which is still stuck on its freaking MAC address, which means that now, whereas before the idea was you couldn't be tracked because every single time randomly generated strings of letters and numbers are going out as your IP address, except for this one device, which still uses the same code every single time, which means the rest of your network can now be tracked because someone monitoring your traffic coming out is still seeing that. And they're still seeing the, uh, the suffix that the ISP has added to you. So yeah, just seriously, guys, can you, could you not please? That's kind of nasty. Yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's, it's in a com- in a section of the industry that I expect to be disappointed from. They still find new it's, ways to upset me. You expect disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been hinting at this all night. So yeah, on YouTube, this is a place that I often go to to check out GPU stock and you know, six to eight months ago, you'd get an alert once every 10, 15 minutes for, you know, some card that's actually in stock and price is bad, but they, you go there and they, they just quickly sell out. And now you go there and we're getting 10 stock alerts per minute with prices that continually just trend down. I've never seen that much in stock uh, ever. And it just, you know, and it makes a really funny sound whenever it, it does, uh, you know, a stock alert. So, yeah, you should uh, take a look at that if you really want a card and catch one make the same either noise Amazon, as, uh, Best Buy. What's that? Does it make the same noise as Sebastian's dryer? Pretty much. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, this, 
uh, if I, yeah, this too. is this is the place to go if if you want to get good stock alerts and damn it, that's it's it's pretty accurate, pretty good. And nice. we're now just getting it so there's you know yeah, you get tons of them all the time. Let's go to those places and get a graphics card without having to battle the bots. Uh, Jeremy, your pick this week. Believe it or freaking not. It's time for the uh, annual Hackaday Prize Challenge again. I, I swear that we just got announced winners a few months ago, but, well, apparently I'm wrong. Uh, so it, the, the same thing goes as every year. There are five different categories. Uh, in each, there are five different winners. Uh, you win from, like, a couple hundred bucks straight up to 10000 in a residency at a fully, you know, at steel... Uh, no, I don't want to say steel case because... They're the bane of my existence. Uh, supply frame, uh, it, which is a down in California, and it's like a, a design space where you've got all the tools you could possibly ever want, and you can you can build whatever you want. So what their idea is, uh, if you haven't heard this before, is that they they pick five different areas where you try and make things a little bit better for the world, and what they want is a, a, a stepped out design of how you would accomplish this particular project. And honestly, you can win at least some money just by designing while designing a project without having built anything. As long as it's stepped out well enough that people can actually build it. You don't even have to do a video until towards the end of it. So this year, the uh, sections and as of today, planet friendly power is the first one. So the idea behind this is, you know, can you figure out a better way to harvest energy? Can you figure out a more redundant or effective way of dealing with batteries? Uh, you know, just literally anything that makes, you know, a little bit of energy a little bit better. Uh, they, they go through with the, the reuse, recycle, revamp, because you don't just have to recycle stuff. You can have a giant drawer full of stuff that, you know, one day you're going to build a project out of, but perhaps is a good way to get a hold of, some of the stuff that they glue inside of everything nowadays. Uh, next one is hack it back where, you know, and these are one of my favorite things is, you know, you take an ancient piece of tech and you make it do new th tricks. It's a lot of fun and it's honestly a, a cheap way to get an interesting product or to teach your kids how to do stuff. Next is climate resilient communities. Uh, because yet yeah, that's going to be a thing. You, you, you kind of, kind of want to have to deal with the climate and what the hell it's going to do, especially if, you know, you're only about 10, 15 feet above water. And the last is just the wild card. And they do this every year. Uh, so if you have a project and you freaking love it and you, you just, it doesn't fit into any one of them, toss it in there, give it a shot. You next thing you know, you might win like 50 grand uh, and a residency in a, a lab with more toys than you could ever think of dealing with so give it a shot it's it's fun and i look forward to reporting on the winners because of, like honestly my favorite one ever uh was an environmental challenge to make things a little bit safer for someone and it was a kid over in africa who designed what was essentially a little waterproof battery housing with two little sticks on the side that went up and down and you toss it into a standing pool of water and it would cause enough ripples that the mosquito larvae would drown. All of a sudden, dengue fever and that, and yellow fever and Zika and that went down in the communities, and they're spreading them out because it's literally a waterproof battery enclosure with two little stepping motors and two little sticks that flap, and it's killing mosquitoes at a brilliant rate. And do you happen to know what animal on the planet kills the most humans every year? Is it mosquitoes? It is indeed. Huh. Did not know. I thought it was yeah, gamers. No, no gamers well, kill no, far just fewer. Bag but but they, they, still, they, they definitely kill, just not as many. I mean, it's yeah. on. It moves the gamers needle. Gamers kill but just, carbs. Yeah. That's what gamers So do. even if you don't want to apply to it, it's worth just watching the, the... And literally every single one of the submissions, in order to do it, they have to give you a step-by-step -step on how to build it. So you don't even have to participate. You can just make their stuff. And they'll love it for you for it. Brett, your your turn. 
like it or not, summer is approaching despite the amount of snow uh, knocking down trees at Sebastian's house and burying him in six feet of, of snow in <laughs> Michigan. And you need to solve the problem of being able to take your uh, gin and tonic or your your vodka, you know, and soda or, you know, seven up and your your crack and rum and on the go with music. What can you do to solve this problem? This product is for you. I found it. It's a stainless steel tumbler with wireless speaker attached and screwed to the bottom. Bluetooth. You can't say no. Woot has an option to buy two. You should definitely get that. This solves a problem you didn't know you had. Go. Order now. Operators are standing by. That's all I have to say. Everybody, thanks hey, for watching, listening, like, however you consume the podcast. We'll come back again and do it next week. Uh, until then, good night.